this market will be defined by an inability to source product readily before it's all said and done. It's getting closer. Premiums are going up, more interest into the public. If these kinds of things happen and become obvious to the mainstream, what will be a decent supply chain overnight disappears. This is Dunnigan Kaiser, founder of Liberty and Finance. I'm now a licensed gold and silver broker for Miles Franklin. Call me directly for the physical gold and silver that you need at the best price with personalized private service from one of the oldest and best companies in the business. 31 years strong, A plus rated by the Better Business Bureau. Zero complaints, licensed and bonded. For physical delivery, vault storage, or precious metals IRAs, excellent prices, privacy, and confidentiality. Pay by check, money order, ACH, bank wire, or Bitcoin. Satisfaction guaranteed. For fastest service, just call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 888-81-LIBERTY. And either I or one of my sons and fellow brokers will call you back as soon as we can and understand your needs. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. We have a returning guest. Andy Sheckman is the CEO of Miles Franklin Precious Metals. He joins us this Tuesday, October 26, 2021 for a weekly market update. Andy, thanks for coming back on. Good to see you again, Dunnigan. Thank you. We always appreciate your visits here with us. We try to keep them very sharp and on point and give people a quick insights into what's going on in the supply chain, supply demand, pricing dynamics, availability, uh, backups, lead times, mints, et cetera, of, of the retail precious metals market and frankly, the, the global supply chain that leads up to that. And we also have a, some, some breaking news. Sometimes we have stories that are, that are new and uh, impactful to people's lives and we try to help clear any uncertainty and doubt away for, uh, when with that. And we'd like to kick off today with one of those. This is from Craig Hemke forwarding this from the Wall Street on Parade website. We're going to put a link to this in the description of this video. Biden's nominee Omarova has published plan to move all bank deposits to the Fed and let the New York Fed short stocks. Uh, a couple of the proposals that are listed there. This is a this is by, uh, Biden's nominee to head the office of the Comptroller of the Currency, which is the federal regulator of the largest banks in the country that operate across state lines. For example, uh, she proposes to move all bank deposits from commercial banks to so-called Fed accounts at the Federal Reserve and allowing in extreme and rare circumstances, quote, when the Fed is unable to control inflation by raising interest rates to confiscate deposits of these Fed accounts in order to tighten monetary policy, allowing the uh, Wall Street uh, and Fed to go ahead and short stocks. She says, talk about, and here's one of the things, not just stocks, they thought this was very interesting. It says, if a particular asset class, such as, doesn't say only, but such as mortgage-backed securities or technology stock, rises in market value at rates suggestive of a bubble trend, the Fed trading desk will short these securities, therefore putting downward pressure on their prices to tighten the flow of speculative credit to the asset classes in question. So asset classes, including but not limited to necessarily mortgage-backed securities or technology stocks. So, And also that if the Fed gets into trouble uh, and can't control interest rates, that the banks could tap directly into uh, these accounts that we would all have at the Fed. Uh, this has been the stuff of quote unquote conspiracy theories for the last decade or so. All of the independent media outlets have been blowing the horn, the warning horns, talking about this is the direction things are heading, folks, if you can't see the, the tea leaves. But um, it's been uh, basically poo-pooed or denied or no, nothing to see here. Now we have an actual nominee of the current administration who has written a, a 69 page paper advocating these policies. Uh, your view of this? You know, it's, it's, it's very obvious, it's evident. The handwriting has been on the wall. We are moving towards a digital currency. I, I first talked about this on your show in March of 2020 when Nancy Pelosi called for 
a, uh, a digital currency because viruses have the ability to live upon paper currency. It was, it was very obvious. And even though it appears as that the $600 requirement for reporting is going to be pushed off back up to $10,000, you can tell by what they're trying to do. They're trying to indoctrinate people into a, a Fed currency. Now, the Fed, you know, I, I think a lot of the things that they say that they will do, they already do. They, they are involved in, um, um, let's just call it manipulation of asset classes. And I mean, really what they're doing is manipulating interest rates right now by buying so many treasuries per month. They say it's 120 billion a month. That's what they tell us. It's probably more than that. Uh, but really what they want to do more than anything is to be able to sidestep the commercial banks, uh, to sidestep the commercial banks so that they're able to enact monetary policy without having the commercial banks in the middle having to be the linchpin for lending or not. If they don't lend, the Fed's efforts are muted. Uh, if they do lend, then of course the, the Fed gets their wishes by getting more money out of the system and velocity into the system. But if the commercial banks don't play ball, yeah, it's... Uh, Look, we're entering a period of time where it's becoming evident and obvious that free markets are, are a thing of the past. Chris Powell, uh, you know, the, the, the president of, of GATA for a long time has said there are no free markets any longer, just manipulations. The, the you know, something as central as interest rates should be, uh, should be controlled by the market, not by the central planners. They're basically telling us that they're going to enact uh, monetary policy directly through uh, the Fed, that direct, directly to our digital wallet, that we don't need something like the, uh, as archaic as the, as the FDIC, because, you know, well, who needs an FDIC uh, and, and when you have a printing press? Uh, and I think a lot of this takes into, takes for granted or, or takes into, uh, makes an assumption that the dollar through all of this is still the ultimate world reserve currency. If I were uh, uh, a foreign creditor, these kinds of decisions would terrify me. I would have no interest in staying in a, in a game that is admittingly rigged. At least we've been living under a facade that we still have free markets. But what she is advocating for is a central bank digital currency where uh, everything from monetary policy to taxation to uh, you know, there's no need for it's modern monetary theory is what it is. There is no need for FDIC when the when the Fed can just print. And so, yeah, I, I think this is a very frightening thing. And it's also probably in the tea leaves. I think that this is the direction that that they want us uh, to travel. And um, it's been very obvious. We have felt like conspiratorialists and tinfoil hat wearing uh, commentators, but if you really take a step back and look at what the things they're saying and the things they're doing and the way that they're pushing us, this does not surprise me one bit at all. And you want to know what? There won't be tremendous pushback by the populace. I think, yeah, there'll be some, but most people couldn't care less about this type of uh, this type of rhetoric. It's us that do. Uh, some of the Republican senators maybe, but. Uh, in general, this is the path that I think we are heading down. Unquestionably, we are moving into a cashless society, a digital currency, where all monetary um, all monetary direction will be controlled directly by the Fed, directly to your smartphone. It is the beginning of modern monetary theory, where yeah, you don't need FDIC and insurance. You have the printing press. The Fed can just can take care of everything. So I, I find it to be very frightening, and and certainly. Uh, emblematic of why people should be considering gold and silver right now, not as an investment, but as a refuge uh, from the matrix and an escape from this type of craziness, which uh, just doesn't surprise me at all any longer, Donegan. Yeah, I wanted to read two more little blurbs from this article. Uh, this is a, a direct quote from the writing of this nominee uh, by the Biden administration. For U.S. citizens, individual Fed accounts would be opened automatically upon birth or naturalization. These accounts would be credited automatically with regularly received federal benefits, social security payments, tax refunds, and all other disbursements that depend on one's citizenship status. And we've certainly seen uh, not only your ability to have that dependence 
on your citizenship status, but the ability to access your account can be dependent on just about anything else that, that they want it to be, uh, including you know what you do socially, what you do medically, whatever. There's another uh, quote here directly uh, regarding the Fed's ability to confiscate money from depositors' Fed accounts. It says, aiming to minimize the economic and political fallout from what is likely to be perceived as a government, quote, taking away people's money, this tool will be reserved for use only in extreme and rare circumstances when the Fed is unable to control inflation by raising interest rates and deploying new asset side tools. It is nevertheless important to have a mechanism in place for draining excess liquidity from these accounts with minimal disruption of productive activity. So not only do you have the uh, the uh, international bodies saying, you know, you'll you'll own nothing and be happy or uh, Christine Lagarde saying, uh, well, even if we're taking haircuts from people's accounts, at least be glad you have a job. Um, it, it'll be nevertheless important to have a mechanism in place for draining excess liquidity from your account uh, with minimal disruption in uh, productive activity. What the heck does that mean? Excess liquidity. Does that mean if you have more than you're supposed to have that you've had a good year? That's excess liquidity. I I don't quite understand that. And let's just be real. They can never raise interest rates. If they do raise interest rates under the current system, everything blows up. Uh, you know, I think this becomes as as 1984 George or Orwellian as anything I've ever heard. I find it to be absolutely horrific. And but yet it doesn't surprise me. This is what we've been talking about for a long time, a digital currency controlled by the Fed, a cashless society, people, that'll never happen, but it is happening. And when I saw the, the Democrats uh, propose the $600 uh, reported, reporting threshold, to me that was, again, this is where we're heading. At, you know, the pushback would be, well, look, they've been monitoring us up to 600 bucks forever. So who cares if we now go to a digital currency? Basically, what it means is that if 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 someone uh, you're, if, if you're guilty before perceived innocent, uh, the other way around, it's supposed to be. Uh, they'll just take money out of your account and they'll debit it if, if they if there's a question with anything or any of the social scores that you drive too much or whatever it may be, uh, you didn't get vaccinated or whatever it may be. Um, I don't know, it's where, is this the country that we grew up in? I mean, how this is even able to not be immediately all over all the, the, the evening news and chastised as you know, absurd, to me is the more troubling piece to all of this, that we have to bring it up again and talk about it and in, in a manner that it just should be a whole lot more of a big story front and center that this is the path that I mean, our forefathers, if there, if there really is such a thing as rolling in your grave, literally they're rolling in their grave right now. And what the heck has happened to this country to where uh, everything that this country stands for is literally being thrown by the wayside. And, um, and this is in terms of monetary issues and expanding into modern monetary theory and into and a massive overreach by the government to me is maybe the most scary thing I've heard in the last two years through all of this insanity. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's it's something we should all be really concerned about. And, and mitigating and minimizing your exposure to the U.S. dollar, I don't think has ever been more relevant and more important, especially when you realize something like this, where you wake up and bang, they've transitioned everything away from the banks into a Fed wallet that now you own, and now you are at the mercy of the central planners. You're at the mercy of the government, and um, not a good thing, Don again. Kind of scary, actually. Uh, we've interviewed Wayne Jett, the author of Fruits of Grath, uh, Great Depressions Then and Now, and he talks about the whole strategy of centralized banking is to take the fruits of the laborer and instead of letting the, the fruits of the laborer be held in your own pocket, it's putting it on a piece of paper and then holding it in the banker's pocket and then they can change the rules, they can take any part of it they want, they can debase it, devalue it, uh, they can restrict your access to it. He said that's the whole strategy is making sure that the working man doesn't get to really hold on to his wages and that is not a new topic. That's all the way back in all the parts of the Bible, they talk about one of the gravest sins there is in the eyes of God is depriving a working man of his wages because you're stealing part of his life from him and uh, it's not yours. And so it's it's extremely serious. And, and I agree that we've been 
conditioned to be dumbed down. I think the the younger generation in particular has grown up without privacy expectations uh, and just trusting that all their all their any earnings they might have are in the system and they'll get it out uh, when when they swipe their card or, or scan their their whatever their barcode or thing and um, not realizing that it's it's critical if you don't have personal property rights if you don't have the ability to have and hold and guard and protect and choose what you want to do with your personal property um, you lose any control over freedom over the rest of your life because that's in the hands of someone else and not you and and again to me the fr most frightening part of all this is the lack of of journalistic integrity talking about this why is it not front page even on fox why are they not talking about something like this that it should be screamed from the rooftop we you know we're heading down a path of full modern monetary theory and what, what I think throws a wrench in all of this is that this is the assumption that the dollar still re remains the world reserve currency. And I don't know, I, I, I cannot get past the uh, new relationship between Russia and Saudi Arabia and Nigeria, the two biggest OPEC producing countries, and, uh, and the likelihood that, that OPEC starts taking oil in other currencies and the likelihood that the dollar begins to wane from its singular world reserve status. And so, you know, I, I just, and maybe that's why we have to go full modern monetary theory, because there will be a, a wave of, of inflationary pressure of massively rising interest rates. And maybe this is why they talk about not being able to quell inflation or to bring down interest rates that we'll have to they use these new tools that are given to us because the handwriting is on the wall. This is going to happen. We will, when we are, are being as, as foolish and careless with as being the steward of the world reserve currency, the things that we are doing is going to, the rubber is going to meet the road. At some point, you know, we keep talking about these moments, uh, the seminal moment where maybe OPEC does something like this, or how about just the rest of the world realizes that inflation is not transitory, that it's here to stay, and that uh, the value of the dollars that we are holding are so precipitously and rapidly losing value that you see this moment, this bond moment, where there is a collapse in the bond market. And I am waiting for that to happen. Um, and now they're talking about mod modern monetary theory as a way to combat that type of move. It's it's front running what they know is inevitable, I guess. But um, I don't know. I I just want people to realize that we do not own gold to get wealthy. We own gold and silver because it is wealth, and it's never been more important ever. And when you see these types of these new types of uh, of theories being thrust upon the United States from a from a, a nominee under the Biden administration, it, it, it tells you we're this close to, to these things that have been considered impossible and conspiracy happening. You know, when I talk to people in my daily life and I talk about, you know, I was talking about the $600 deal, you know, you almost feel like after you say it to someone, maybe even they don't have the same political leaning um, mindset that I do. And I try to always be very neutral in it. But they look at you like, almost like you feel like you have to caveat and say, but wait, I, I don't have anything to hide, but it's just an interest. So what I mean by that is that we're so far removed from the principles that this country stood upon for so many years, essentially, you know, for, for hundreds of years that um, I'm, I'm really shocked by the lack of pushback in all of these things that we talk about day to day and the lack of attention on the things that we've talked about over the last year, whether it be Basel III or the IMF asking for a new Bretton Woods or the Chinese Belt Road and Rail Initiative or the massive buying on COMEX where the media makes a big deal about Palantir buying 50 million ounces of gold. Yet the one trader on COMEX right now who Ted Butler thinks is uh, John Paulson uh, he's surmising, but that one trader purchased 130 times what Palantir did. The, the lack of information, the proper information that is not being given to the, to the people, you know, we're well informed. I hope people listen to us, but this is going to catch so many people off guard that when that moment happens, it's going to be chaos. 
If you think there's supply chain problems now and shortages in the store, wait until you see a moment like this where everything flips. Um, if you're not, at least with a portion of your wealth outside the system, you're dead. And I hate to even say anything like that, but I mean, it gives me anxiety hearing this. Like the fact that it's even being entertained and not ridiculed by, by the media, by the politicians and by the public is frightening to me. And I think it's a vast departure from what this country, what we believe this country stands for, because it ain't standing for that anymore when you even allow rhetoric like this to make its way into a thought process. Beyond that, uh, we also look to you, if we could, for quick updates on the overall supply uh, and demand picture in the precious metal space. Any significant changes you're seeing this week in terms of the direction of premiums, availability from major mints, that sort of the demand from investors? Premiums are rising, uh, as I knew they would, and I think they will continue to rise into the winter. Um, there are, from all corners, people talking about these, this seminal moment coming into the end of the year. Um, and there are a lot of people very frightened. And as we talked about last week, the one overriding theme that I get over and over and over and over again is I just don't want to leave my money in the bank, Andy. I don't want to leave my money in the bank. I just sold a house. I don't want to leave it in the bank. I have to pay for college in two years. I don't want to leave it in the bank. Over and over and over again. And this is one of the things that I have, I kind of take a, a, a deeper philosophical look at this and I say, most of us are blessed with good intuition. Most of us don't listen to our inner voice. Uh, you do. I do. I do. I know that about you. And you make decisions that are unconventional. You make decisions that are not popular wisdom, but they are the right decision for you. And so do I. Conventional wisdom means you're part of the herd and you are going to be penned into the, you know, led into the pen with everybody else. Whereas if you realize that unconventional times call for unconventional thinking uh, and you listen to your inner voice, I think people are beginning to do that. And I think there's a greater uh, concern where supply is going to be a big problem. I keep saying this over and over and over again. I'm not talking my book. Look at the American Eagle. Premiums have gone up again. Here we are. We're selling American Eagles. Uh, the regular type twos are at like nine bucks over, or whatever it is. They were seven and a quarter over for a few weeks. Yeah, we were at, we're at nine seventy five, and I I had some people who heard our special about a month ago when we were at seven seventy five, and they and they've been thinking about it and thinking about it. And finally, yesterday, a guy called me up and said, "Okay, I've been thinking about it since last month, and I want to go ahead on those eagles for seven seventy five over." I said, "Uh, sorry, the the new special price just we just announced last week is nine seventy five over." He said, "You're kidding me." So, and that's, that's one of the lowest prices around. Right. And, but everything, I mean, junk silver, uh, as we talked about, and I know you got a lot of uh, people that contacted you about our, our last uh, conversation where junk silver now is, is trading at a, at a couple dollar premium to any of the other coins. These are, this is emblematic of the fact that there is no secondary market. None. No one is selling us anything. Yeah, there might be some swaps or some trades, but nobody is selling back anything. This is why they say there's no bull market like a metals bull market. So in terms of the supply, we are reliant upon six major mints for the most part. U.S., Canada, Austria, Australia, South Africa, United Kingdom. We do have some from other stragglers coming in, and, you know, like uh, the, the Noah's Ark coins. We have we just got some or they're coming in next week. And. Uh, that's made uh, by the Geiger Mint. And so, but Armenia doesn't even have a mint. And Geiger Mint is a private mint. So, I mean, when you talk about the major supply centers, there are six. So I was told last week that the, um, the main, there are six or seven main primary U.S. mint distributors. I'm one of the 27 authorized resellers. But the, the primary distributors last week, one of the big ones, was only selling 5,000 Silver Eagles to it. To, to the distributors like us, max. And you know, 5,000 is nothing in this industry. Uh, you, we talked at length a few weeks ago how the UK Mint was running out of blanks. And this is gonna be a common theme uh, moving forward where when we see these types of things happen or become more obvious that they're gonna happen, 
you will see it happen like that, where the big money is like, oh my gosh, why have I not listened to my inner voice? I knew I should have done that. I need it now. And when that happens, and, and you're going to get some $10 million orders that wipes everything out for a few days, or a $100 million order, order that wipes everything out for a month or two, it's going to happen. And, you know, even having these types of feelings or saying these publicly is something I never even dreamed of. But I will tell you that in all of my years, the things that are happening, the things that you just said to me, the things that we are seeing, um, I don't know. Uh, Dunning and I think, as I've said before, and I will stick to my gun, uh, this market will be defined by an inability to source product readily before it's all said and done. It's getting closer. Premiums are going up, more interest into the public. Um, so right now, supply is okay. Um, but it's not fantastic. And, and I, I think it will probably get tighter and tougher as we move on. Now, fortunately, as I've talked about before, we have very diverse supply chain, um, abilities in with Miles Franklin, because we've been at this for three times longer than almost every company out there. Um, and so we have the ability to source from small and intermediate distributors who are kind of off the radar screen to everyone else. And yet they, they are really quite adept at being able to add an awful lot of supply to our, uh, to our holdings. Um, most of the large companies online are beholden to one, maybe two primary distributors. We work with all of them, plus all of the mid tier and small coin shops. And we're constantly trying to get, supply coming in, but it is becoming more challenging and more tenuous. And um, I don't know, it, it's following a path that, that I've seen for a while now. So, you know, in terms of the special right now, uh, we are going to keep the 2021 um, Austrian Philharmonic uh, for another week or two. Hopefully we can keep this going as long as possible. Um, that will be at three dollars and seventy five cents over. But I know that we had um, uh, forty two thousand available right now. Um, and, you know, those can go quickly. Um, we also are going to offer the 10 ounce Wall Street mint bars. We have thirty eight hundred in next Monday, thirty eight thousand ounces. And those are at three dollars and fifteen cents per ounce over the price of silver and you and I looked around and didn't see anyone even close to that. Uh, so we're very proud to be able to offer these kinds of specials. Um, well, to your listeners and to any of the Miles Franklin family, we really are, but it's, it's becoming harder and harder to do that. And, um, um, so I, I guess I would simply say that, um, if these kinds of things happen and become obvious to the mainstream, what will be a decent supply chain overnight disappears. And I mean that wholeheartedly because look, if someone called me up right now and spent 50 million bucks, I'd have nothing left, nothing until I get more. Maybe that's two, three weeks. I don't know. I mean, that's how fast it goes. And that would clean out my gold too. I mean, it, it just goes so fast and, and continually rotating it. We're more of a logistics company than we are a precious metals company these days, just trying to keep the supply chain greased and moving from the distributors to the client and everything moving. It's, it's a full-time job for two employees right now. And, and it's exhausting my, my traders. I mean, they're, they're exhausted and beaten up over it, constantly hedging and following and monitoring and staying on top of promises. You know, uh, we get promised we'll have something and then it's, oh, sorry, it's going to be next week. Well, tell that to the clients that you locked in for who are expecting it this week. It's a constant balancing act. Um, it never was this way, but it's becoming more of the norm, which leads me to believe that we're on the, the, the you know, the tip of the spear. We could go either way. If it gets tough, bang, you fall off. And, and then what? You know, sorry, we're out of product. Sorry that the Rand Mint has no more uh, Kruger Rands for the rest of the year. Sorry, the Perth Mint is shut down. Well, those things haven't happened yet, but they have happened before. And I think they will happen again. Yeah, your description of uh, shipments 
coming in late or not when expected, et cetera. We just interviewed an insider from the trucking industry this past weekend. And I also shared in that interview, uh, you know, he shared some statistics and some perspectives in general from the, from the trucking industry and the supply chain. And I also shared from our own household, we, we order a lot of things in and we used to be able to just re- reliably expect that when you make your order, boom, within a, a certain number of days, you're going to see the thing show up. We've had tracking on many items start to show progress towards us and then it just stops and it just says no estimate of day or shipment is gone. Uh, you know, we'll get you further information later, that sort of thing. So there is stresses and strains even on the final, final delivery portion of the supply chain, but certainly within the inter-business from semi-finished goods to finished goods in the manufacturing, such as manufacturing of bullion, uh, there are interruptions, disruptions, unexpected delays, et cetera. And it seems to be coming more and more common, more the, the rule than the exception. Yeah. So, I mean, my trader said to me, we have 25,000 Noah's Ark coins clearing customs today. I spec them. I expect them in quotation marks in next week. Well, they should be. I mean, they clear customs on the East Coast and they go across the country to our vault in the Midwest and they should should be in next week. And that's what we're told. But with these trucking issues or the, the just the, the log jams from clearing customs all the way to the end point, you know, we're reliant upon a set of promises and estimates that enable us to sell product to the public because, you know, no one keeps one, two, three hundred million dollars worth of product on hand, they sell it, you get more and it keeps rotating. Well, in that rotating process for the past 30 years, it's always been, yeah, it's we'll have it shipped on a truck today, you'll have it in two days. Not anymore. Now it's a balancing act and you're you're relying on 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 other people's estimates and trust that they'll get the job done and that the truck picks it up and that the truck I mean it's it's nuts. But this is just again, I think, part and parcel with my feeling that it's getting to a point where it wouldn't take a lot of mainstream, really mainstream waking up to, geez, it's time to do something. I'm scared. Uh, time to get out of my mainstream um, uh, traditional equity position for this to just, I think, become a, a real, real, real nightmare and a real headache for not just for us, but for the people trying to, to get gold and silver at the 12th hour. Ain't going to happen. Well, Andy, we always appreciate these weekly specials and the weekly updates and insight into what's going on in the precious metals, supply, demand, inventory, premiums, et cetera. And uh, always on be- as always, on behalf of our viewers, just thank you for joining us on Liberty and Finance. Absolutely. The pleasure is mine. Done again and again. I, I got to just tell you and everyone else out there that what you read to me it- it has literally given me anxiety. It's It's one of the more uh, distressing things that I've heard in a long time. And I hope people understand really what, what this person is saying and what the implications are. And uh, anyone who's sitting with all their wealth and dollars is destined to have real problems down the road if these kinds of things happen. So anyways, thanks for the opportunity to uh, chat with you and your, your listeners once again. I look forward to picking up with you where we left off next week. Thank you very much. Andy Schechtman, CEO of Miles Franklin Precious Metals. Thanks for joining us on Liberty and Finance. To record. This is Dunnigan Kaiser, founder of Liberty and Finance. I'm now a licensed gold and silver broker for Miles Franklin. Call me directly for the physical gold and silver that you need at the best price with personalized private service from one of the oldest and best companies in the business. 31 years strong, A plus rated by the Better Business Bureau, zero complaints, licensed and bonded for physical delivery, vault storage, or precious metals IRAs, excellent prices, privacy, and confidentiality. Pay by check, money order, ACH, bank wire, or Bitcoin, satisfaction guaranteed. For fastest service, just call 1 888 81 Liberty. That's 888 81 Liberty. And either I or one of my sons and fellow brokers will call you back as soon as we can and understand your needs.